Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about are everyday watches. These are watches that you like wearing every day. They're not fancy and uh, they're not dress watches. They're not sort of sports watches, but they're just sort of everyday watches without a whole lot of complications, if any at all. And you use them just for glancing at your wrist and telling time. Uh, I have on my uh, Etude Number no. 1, which is my favorite everyday watch. Uh, it's easy to tell the time, and it's fun to wear. Now, uh, what I want to do today is that I want to take a look at three different levels of watches. These are sort of the first group is going to be the very affordable ones, but fun to wear every day. They're good everyday watches. The second group are a little more expensive watches. Again, same thing. They're good everyday watches. And finally are these the most expensive watches. The sort of, I don't know, I don't like the term high horology. I'll just say this. They all have some kind of exceptional horology to them. So let's get started. The first one is the Tissot Heritage Petite Seconde. I've talked about this watch, I don't know how many times, because I think it's such a neat watch. It's a good deal. Originally, uh, Tissot sold these for not too many years ago either, 4,000 bucks. And for some reason, they decided, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have this anymore. It has the ETA caliber 6498-1 movement, which originally, had been used in a pocket watch. So it tends to be a little bigger, but the thing that's nice about uh, this one, they fitted it exactly, you can see it in the picture, into the case. It's not a one of those little bitty ones with a great big case. It's a case and the movement are well fitted. The other thing about this that I like is that the it's, it's pretty easy to access the regulator arm and with a wooden toothpick uh, if your watch starts running too fast or too slow, you can move that one way or the other. It runs at 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, which is a, lets you see the movement. And it's got a good size um, barrel. And uh, what I would do uh, with one of these is uh, I found this cobalt blue strap at Jean Rousseau Watches, which is, they have them in the U.S., uh, at in New York and then they order them and they have them made for you in Paris and then they ship them back and forth. They're very nice. Now you don't have to get something that expensive, but if you did, it would really dress up the watch in terms of not fancy, but just sort of make it look a lot nicer and have a lot more fun. I like this watch. Now the second one is uh, one by Hanhart called Pioneer One Blue. It's got a Salida uh, SW200 in it. It's an automatic uh, watch, 28,800 uh, semi-oscillations per hour. Uh, it's got a power reserve of 38 hours, anti-reflective sapphire glass, and a screwed down case back. And what that is, is that you can take the case back off. And like this one, uh, or like the first first one we looked at, the um, Tissot, there's a very simple, with a screwdriver, you can do some regulation. Now, this one's a little more expensive. Uh, the list price on this was 990 uh, euro. Now, in the U.S., that's probably in dollars, it's something a little more than that, probably be around $1,200. I'm not exactly sure, but it's not crazy expensive, and it's a very nice watch. I like Hanhart. Um, just like I said, you look at it, you can glance at it, it's just nice. Uh, again, like I said, for an everyday watch, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, and it's sort of fun to wear. Now, the third one is a Seiko 5 Sports. The thing about Seiko 5 is that they come in different uh, sizes. This one's 38 millimeter. I have one of the original Seiko 5s. And it's, it's smaller, and um, but it's proved to be a really good watch. Uh, these watches are automatic only. And now what that means is that you don't wind them up at all. You just simply give them some run on the old uh, rotor will wind them for you. Um, 
they also have a day date, which is nice. You turn it one way for the day of the week and you turn it the other way for the uh, day of the month. Simple, nice watches. Uh, this particular one is $325. It comes with a, um, a metal bracelet and a deployment or a type of, of uh, trifold push button uh, release on the clasp. So it's easy to put on and take off. It's, it's a nice watch, $325. Very good deal. Now, um, this next watch, we we get into sort of the next level, into the middle level. This one is one I really like. It's a Harboring II Irwin Globetrotter. Now, the Globetrotter, uh, is, it has a dual time zone. That's why they call it the Globetrotter. But the Irwin, the reason I like it, it has jumping seconds. And the jumping seconds, uh, they used to call these uh, doctor's watches because for taking a pulse, they could see it. Um, of course, if you have a, even a cheap quartz watch, that's how the seconds go. But I like this one. Um, the mechanism you can see for jumping seconds that uh, Richard Harbring and Maria Harb Harbring created is very nice. It's got a really good uh, insides in it. Uh, it does run at 4 hertz, which is not my favorite, but <laughs> it's probably the favorite of most watchmakers. Um, it has a Carl Haas balance uh, spring, which is important because it's uh, it's anti-magnetic or non -mag it doesn't magnetize at all. I have Harbring II Felix, and it has the same, it, the, it has the A11 movement, but it's a little different kind of movement. It doesn't have jumping seconds. But this watch, I think, is for an everyday watch, and especially if you're gonna be doing some international traveling, and you don't want something that's going to be someone's going to steal. <laughs> you want just a good everyday watch. I think this is a neat one. Now, this next one is one, for some reason, the Rolex Air King is, the, I, 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 I don't own a Rolex. I'm, I'm not a Rolex fanboy. I'm not a Rolex hater. Rolexes are watches. And us... Some I like better than others, like any other brand of watches. And this one I like, but man, I tell you, I've there's a lot of a lot of people are negative about it for one reason or the other. One of my favorite um, uh, sort of online journals is uh, Quill and Pad. And this guy had a write up, and just ran it over. And I've read other ones. I've read, you know, it's just they they don't like it. I'm not quite sure why. Originally, the Air King was supposed to sort of be a an homage to the RAF and the airplanes and that and so forth. And the the current dial, which I really like, came off a land racer called the Bloodhound. It was a supersonic speed land race car. And before they had the uh, before they put that dial on the uh, on the Air King. And they pat it on the race car. There it is down at the, uh, you can see it down at the bottom. And it had the um, uh, the backlit dial. It has a speed, uh, the white hand is a speed hand. The green one is to memorize the memory of the maximum speed. And then about two o'clock, it has an indicator for Mach 1, which is uh, 767 plus change miles an hour. Well, the Bloodhound, the fastest it could go was 628 miles an hour or 1,011 uh, kilometers per hour. And man, you know, so all right, so it didn't didn't make Mach 1, <laughs> but it's got a cool design, I thought. Uh, and so they used it on the, um, on the Air King. And some people, they just said some of the, cattiest things about that. I think it's cool. You can look at it. Uh, you've got the, you know, you know where 12 o'clock is, it's got the 9, 3, and 6, and then it has the actual minutes around it. It's got a nice uh, bracelet on it. Uh, caliber 3230. Now, the 3230 is used on a lot of other Rolex watches. Uh, this includes the same one as on the non-date explorer. It's uh, it's on the uh, submariner. 
it's on the DSC, the, I forgot what DSC stood for, uh, Sea Dweller, and it's on the Oyster Perpetual. So, I mean, it's a, <laughs> I mean, it's used on a lot of different ones. And why the dumping so much on the Rolex, I don't know, but I like it. I think it's a neat watch. And um, so there, <laughs> I just like it as an everyday watch. Okay, um, the next one is a underrated, I think. It's a German watch called Tatima. And the, the the brand is Tatima. This one is called the Patria Admiral Blue. It's a beautiful watch. It's got a Tatima 617 movement. Now, one of the reasons I like Tatima so much is that um, I know uh, Rolf Lang. And at one time, he was sort of the main trainer there. And he built a very special watch for them at one time. forgot exactly which one it was. And I don't think it's still made, but it was just this really primo watch and it's, it's one of these watch companies that makes excellent really excellent watches it's got a nice clean dial on it you can tell the time at a glance a beautiful uh in the back you can see the movement you can you can see the uh balance uh, cock and the winding gears at now, if they opened it up, you could see a lot more. But uh, this is one I really like. Uh, and it's $5,900, which isn't cheap, but it's not killer uh, expensive either. Now, this one is a Zajar Lacoutre Master Ultra Thin Small Seconds. Recently, uh, Zajar Lacoutre jacked up the prices. I mean, really jacked them up. And this one is, is a wonderful everyday watch, I think. Now, at, you go to the Zajar Lakuta site, and it's $9,550. Uh, but I found one brand new at Joma Shop for $6,750, which was, I think, pretty much the old price. And I, the thing about Zajar Lakuta, um, you know, you can find some very well discounted ones and of course if you buy at the discounted price you're not going to get some kind of whining that oh well it lost its its uh price it's a neat watch it's a classy watch judge or uh like i said if if you're gonna buy one <laughs> try to get it at the best price and you'll find this watch great movement they, they started as a movement maker primarily, and it's another one, a great everyday watch. Looks good, nice one. Now, moving up, uh, this is where we sort of get into Rarify there. Uh, now, the one that, one of the three that I have is the FP Journe Chronomet Souverain Havana. I have a regular uh, Chronomet Souverain, just it's uh, in platinum with and it's got a white dial. It's one of the original ones. Uh, I really like uh, this one though. It's it's just, uh, there's something about it I like. Now on mine, uh, I just enjoy wearing it. The power reserve indicator is what they, is what they had on the old um, chronometers that they used in for navigation. And they were crucial, and so they would start off with the number of hours since last wound. And so you start off with zero, that means it's fully wound, and then it goes down to about uh, 50 or so that is now unwound. And so a lot of people complain about that. Says, ah, oh, you know, I'm used to say I want to see it the full. Mm, I I wouldn't. I I think it's a it's a very cool thing, and. Uh, it runs at 3 hertz. It's a speed that I like. Uh, the caliber 1304 is the same caliber as I have in mine, so I can attest to it. It's got twin barrels in, uh, it's called in parallel. When, when you have twin barrels in parallel, they don't do it to lengthen the, uh, the time that the watch will run, but they rather they do it to even out the the workload, and so you have a smoother, uh, what would you call it, um, constant force. 
and so you have constant time. One of my favorite movements, a favorite watch, uh, I like mine just fine because I could never afford another one. <laughs> this one, now the price of this, 39600 it's up. It's almost double what they used to be when I got mine. So um, I, this, unfortunately, you can't find any good deals on it. You can get on a waiting list, maybe. <laughs> That's the best you can do. They're great watches. Now, another one that I really like and also happen to have is the Langenheim uh, Friedrich II, is a caliber six. Everything about this watch, first of all, it just it's very easy to look at and glance at and tell the time with. Uh, caliber six is hand wound, 18,000 semi oscillations per hour, 2.5 hertz, which is another thing so you can flip it over and look at the movement uh, at that sort of a oh, uh, a comfortable <laughs> frequency rather than something, you know, beating the tar out of everything like a rendered mule. It's got the trigonal bridge so that opens it up and you can see a lot more of the gearing and what's going on. It's got a swan neck regulator. Uh, it's not one I would even try to regulate. I'd try it on it to so though. And the, the uh, then on top of that, it's got a diamond uh, balance. If, from what I understand, it simply was an, it's just an old German uh, watchmaker thing. They put a diamond on top of the balance shaft. Uh, so oh, this is another. It's great every day. I wear this. This is the one I have when I wear it in steel. It's more in gold, obviously. 29,800 is again like everything else it's gone up now the final one is this uh one is Gronfeld 1941 Principia automatic and this essentially is an automatic uh movement and a I mean a beautifully done movement and uh, the stainless steel version goes for 36,000 euro and the gold version goes for almost 50,000. And these don't include tax. The VAT is, will knock you for a loop. In the US, it's not quite as bad. Not quite as bad by a long shot, I might add. Caliber G06 automatic, three hertz, 56 hour reserve. What a beautiful watch. And the thing about Gronfeld, if, you, if you're going to get one, they give you all kinds of options for the hands, for the dial, for the, uh, for the band, everything. And so you don't get the one that's you know, off the shelf, so to speak. You get one that the trouble is, is that the, you're, they, they got waiting lists for these wonderful watches. Anyway, those, those are my picks for what I think is their great everyday watches. They're ones you enjoy wearing. You glance at the time. Uh, let me let me know what you like to wear on an everyday. What's your favorite everyday watch? Use the comment section. Let me know. And uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.